right, and welcome back to another episode of That Figure Skating Show. Uh, today we are blessed with greatness. We have a wonderful guest in the house, the infamous, the legendary <laughs> David Wilson. Welcome, David. Hey, guys. Nice to see you. Like he himself <laughs> named in the Bible, David. Uh, yes. <laughs> also my middle name, and he all, yeah. So sure. we're all connected. Same. Yeah. My name is also Hebrew. <laughs> I used to complain about my name, that it was too common. And my mother would get upset with me. And she said, it's not common, dear. It's popular. And you know, <laughs> and you know, dear, David means beloved in the Bible. So beloved David, welcome to our show. You are responsible for some of the most iconic programs in modern skating history. And, uh, we- you know, we're very excited to break some of those down and what the process looked like for you. So I think we should start with Yuna. Probably the most iconic program people think of is the James Bond program. Where was she hiding that gun? <laughs> in her boot. In her, in her boot. Yeah, it was in her stylish boots. Uh, so that was our fourth season together. The idea for that program came from a conversation with the fabulous Sandra Bezik. I had brought Sandra in uh, the previous season to help us with a show program. You know, it was just finally at that point after three years where we were venturing into more sensual kind of subject matter and things like that. And I thought, okay, well, now she really needs to work with Sandra. She needs to actually work with a beautiful woman, not just me. Um, <laughs> and I thought she was ready for Sandra. So uh, she came in and, and, and we did um, Please Don't Stop the Music by Rihanna for her shows in Korea. And it was great. And we had a great time. It was fabulous. And one day, <clears throat> one of the last, our last days, we went for coffee together, just Sandra and I. Out of that conversation I shared with her, I was like really stumped with a short and I don't have anything yet. And we were just chatting about Yuna and all of a sudden her eyes kind of got big and she was like, what about a Bond girl? Like not, not just one particular Bond film, but like every Bond girl, like, you know, it, the kind of like, she's dangerous and mysterious and beautiful. So I was really excited. And you, you spoke about it like a little briefly about uh, Sandra working with Yuna to like, you know, start bringing out that kind of feminine empowerment element to that. What was that process like? Well, it's interesting with Yuna because when I first started with her, she was extremely, um, I would say, stone-faced. I don't mean that in a in a negative way. She just was very non-expressive, but beautiful and had beautiful lyrical body language, but no no kind of facial engagement, very much behind a wall, I guess you could say. But she had this fabulous dignified presence nonetheless. And so my process with her over the years was just, I mean, the first program I did was to Lark Ascending and it was a long program. And that's by Vaughn Williams and it's very ethereal and fluid and um, it suited her skating style and it didn't really require much expression particularly. And then from there, we started making little baby steps each year. And then the next one was Miss Saigon. And then we did um, Die Fledermouse, which is a comedic operetta. So it's got some little frivolity moments, a little flirty, flirtatious moment here and there. So it was like little baby steps each season. And um, the year before, I had done Scheherazade for her long program and Danse Macabre for her short. So Danse Macabre was very dynamic and very powerful with that 
almost like a, like a sinister kind of thing. Um, and then Shahrazad is was um, of course very sensual and exotic, and so it was almost like combining those two elements into one program for Bond, um, in a way. Yeah. So it was kind of the culmination of the work yeah. you had already done with her to bring that personality exactly. out. It there's was... no way we could have done it season one. I mean, there's just mm -hmm. I don't I don't think. I don't think she would have been comfortable doing it and I don't think people would have embraced her doing it either. Like I think it was the two go hand in hand. We kind of built ourselves up to that level. And Sandra is so brilliant at just swooping in and coming up with the perfect idea that everybody needs, you know? Amazing. Um, I mean, it must have been uh pretty surreal working with a, a skater like you now. Yeah, no, I have to say like I've been yeah. working since 1991 and I love my work. And I, I think Dylan, you know this, like I always kind of show up the same way for everything. I'm excited, about, as excited about working with a young kid in, in the pre-novice level as I might be, you know, someone who's on the upper echelon. But with Yuna, it was, there was, it was, there was something more I have to say, and it had nothing to do with her status or her achievements is that she we really worked closely together and ongoing those first four years of course when she lived in toronto but it kept going after even though she left i would go see her uh wherever she ended up but it was her investment in what i had to offer that was different and there's only a few times that i've experienced that with skaters in an ongoing sustained way um, so I felt very blessed um, and honored that she believed in me also. Well, it showed in the work you guys did together. So um, congratulations on you. everything you did for and with her. Um, moving forward into, uh, you know, the men, I, I do want to ask you, do you find in terms of single skating, do you find it easier choreographing men's programs versus women's programs, vice versa, or is it kind of just based on that individual? No, it, it, everyone's different, whether it's a boy or a girl or a pair or a dance. I had as much fun working with Javi on all his programs as I did with Jeffrey or Patrick or Yuzu or Yuna or Joanny or Cynthia Phaneuf. You know, when you have a client that does multiple seasons with you, there's, there's, there's a deepening of the relationship because you get to know each other more and, and then you kind of get into a develop, a, you have the chance to develop something. Uh, so those are my most cherished experiences over the years. There's been some one-offs that were really great too. Like when Sasha Cohen came to work with me, that was really interesting. <laughs> it was fun, uh, it was fleeting, but it was cool. Well, there, I mean, there, there is a layer there's layers of trust that you kind of, you know, work through when you work with someone longer, especially in yeah. choreography realm and in the opening yeah. up and allowing yourself to embrace um, yeah. styles and vulnerability and all these types of things. Yeah. And as the choreographer, the more time we get, the better chance we have to make a positive impact. It's hard to be, it's hard. Like when somebody comes from a, a far away place and you've got a week you know it's hard to get everything right that week especially if it's the first time um and especially if they don't come back for follow-up and a lot of them don't because it's expensive you know um you try to demand that they should not having a substantial follow-up is hard it's hard it's because you're just it's kind of like throwing your child out to the world unprepared, <laughs> you know? And your child being the, the choreography. The obviously. choreography, the work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just to clarify that. Yeah. David's got a rid of a lot of children. They're all just- Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but like imagine sending your kid off to school and it's not fully, you know, they're not ready. I don't know. Like it's just, it's hard. Yeah. You know, you've had you've had a lot of skaters uh, work with you that you've had long term relationships with where you've yeah. been involved in their development, but someone like Yuzuru Hanyu, 
uh, you know, legendary uh, men's skater, two-time Olympic champion. You've worked with him kind of more on and off. Uh, what was what was that process like working with him? Because if I correct me if I'm wrong, you worked with him leading up to the Sochi Games, those two yeah. seasons. Yeah. Well, he came the year before, and so my first long program for him, he did at the 2013 Worlds. Um, and then it was the next year that it was the Olympics. That first season, he he desperately wanted to do um, Phantom, but I was already working with Patrick, and Patrick had was known for having done Phantom, albeit I didn't choreograph that program for him, but it was something from his fairly recent past, and. I didn't feel comfortable doing it for Yuzu. It, it was, you know, oftentimes we get put in these awkward situations where it's not, I mean, it's kind of a, it's a judgment call, whether it's kosher or not kosher, you know? And so I said to him, I'm sorry, I, I can't do that, but let me, let's try to find something else along those lines. So that's why I found the uh, Notre Dame de Paris, um, you know, it was a musical and it had that kind of, similar vibe to Phantom. And so that's why we, it was a compromise. Then the next season, the Olympic season, um, he had very much in his mind what he wanted to do. And so I had a bunch of ideas, but he absolutely wanted to do Romeo and Juliet. So I was like, oh gosh, okay, <laughs> here we go again. As I had done that with Sasha Cohen and, I think all of us choreographers have done it a million times. All three versions, <laughs> or a mixture of all three versions. Uh, <laughs> As a person right? who's so new to choreography, it's just like, how, how how have I already done five Romeo and Juliet? Yeah. Um, I yeah. think we should just let those 12 year olds lay dead and just let them, <laughs> let them, let them, let them finally be at peace wherever the hell they are. <laughs> but <laughs> Well, you, I, 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 okay. So, I um, got this letter from him. He wrote me this long email <laughs> and it was over the top. I mean, he was like, it was basically, I'm, I have to skate to this song. I'm willing to do anything you tell me. I'll do anything you ask, but please, 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 can we use this music? I have to do it. I'm, I'm willing to, I'll do anything. I'm willing to die for it you know, to win the, I, and I don't want to wait. I want to win the Olympics. I don't want to wait to the next Olympics just because I'm young. I want to win this one and I'm willing to die for it. It was like, oh my God, wow. <laughs> it was just, I'd never encountered such, I mean, off the charts intensity. So we did Romeo and Juliet, right? <laughs> what do you, <laughs> Well, I mean, like, if if someone is also just so willing to just, you know, fit the role of death in such a tragic uh, comedy as a, as um, Romeo and Juliet is, I I mean, like, you just got to say yes. I, I Especially if someone as you, Zero, is just, like, begging for yeah. you to mold him into, I don't know, Mercutio. <laughs> Yeah, I, I mean, I was going to ask, at what point do you kind of just go, okay, you win, make your yeah, music. Yeah, well, that was the point where I said, you know, because I'd never, I mean, sometimes you fight for something that you really believe in um, with kids. It, it all depends. Um, with Yuzo, I saw right off the bat from that first year that he had very strong ideas about what he wanted to do. And unfortunately, the first season i couldn't i couldn't satisfy what i couldn't go the direction he wanted to go so and because he was had such conviction i thought well either i'm going to do this or he's going to do it with somebody else basically so and you know what all of those whether it's carmen or romeo and juliet or any of the 12 standard figure skating pieces i think we've all done them many times for different people 
and they're all gorgeous music and so if you just kind of forget about the past and just approach it from you know that day a fresh perspective then it's it's always good it's always fun it's always it always feels rewarding in the end so and how would you compare working with yuzu to working with patrick working with jeff buttle like you've had some iconic artistic skaters um, that you've worked with and how would you compare the, the process between them okay so i will say those two years that i worked with him he was very young he was a typical junior man just having come senior he still had that junior boy kind of attitude all about the jumps it was all about you know he had a lot of issues with his stamina still at that point it was really difficult for him to even just get through a long program you know he's asthmatic he hadn't quite kind of matured as a skater so it was amazing to work with him like because he has a real a real artistic soul and an artistic spirit but in functional terms you know kind of monitoring his progress and trying to get the program to be what it should be under pressure in the moment within the training it was a struggle it was a real struggle to get the program to be what i wanted it to be now he ended up winning in sochi and and skating fairly well but it was an event where nobody really knocked it out of the park you know what i mean and sometimes that happens and he you know was the prevailing winner um but as a choreographer i i never felt like oh well that was really do you know what i mean even though he won the olympics it wasn't like one of my most cherished pieces or anything like that at all however uh he I, I haven't worked with him competitively for years but in the last few years he's had me do show numbers for him and we've had an amazing time that's been wonderful there was even one of the show one of the numbers we he barely jumped we did a single axle and a triple axle back to back like a big open axle and a triple axle, and that was it it was all choreography all the time it was all about the music and it was a really wonderful experience um for me so um that's been great does that answer your question <laughs> absolutely <laughs> you're captivating david <laughs> we're just i just love hearing you talk i love you i'm like oh, i'm always in awe of you you've just been such an incredible person to even like i though i have not worked with you just having driven Jeremy while he stayed here. Oh, yeah. to well, we were supposed to work, to work together, remember, Asher, at one yeah, point? Yeah, we were, yes. Like for your singles. Yeah. And I was all yeah. excited about it, but it never happened, did it? No, it didn't. And I was just like, man, I'm tired of jumping and falling. <laughs> it was that point. <laughs> My butt hurts. I want to go to Twizzles now. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, but in uh, talking about uh, me and like in ice dance, you have done some pairs and ice dance programs, uh, and you have worked with um, you know the Canadian darlings Tessa and Scott. Yeah. What was it like, you know, not being a formal ice dancer, working with two iconic ice dancers, and and I know it's hard because you know ice dance has we have a lot of weird rules. How is it working with us coming from more of a free skate choreography background? The little bit of work I've done in the ice dance world. I mean, before that I had done, you know, over the years, this and that and this and that, but nothing, nothing with anyone um, on the world stage until Mary France and Patrice um, asked me to work with them for the Torino 2006. So I did their free dance um, and it was just somewhere in time and they knew what they wanted to do. Um, and they said to me, so the thing that, the thing that got me was that Mary France said to me, we know how to ice dance. We know all about the rules. We don't want you to worry about the rules. We don't want you to even think about the rules. All we want from you is how you hear the music 
how you feel the music. That's what we want. So I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> I can do that. Great. <laughs> that was fun. And then the Tess and Scott thing, uh, when, when, when Tess and Scott decided to come back, Mary France called me and said, you know, she told me that kind of about a year before other people knew. And she said, I'd like to have your help with them, uh, if you would. I said, of course. Uh, so I was kind of more just helping Mary France with them. Yeah, so that was really fun. And, and Tessa and Scott are also similar to Mary France and Patrice were because they've been dancing together since they were nine years old, eight and nine years old. So they had a similar kind of like, with Mary France and Patrice, their dynamic was so established and they had such a wonderful work chemistry that it was just fun to be part of what they already had, you know, like it was just a dream. And Tess and Scott are very much like that too. They have their own, and they don't even, even have to talk when they skate together. They, they feel each other and they understand what, it's amazing to work with a couple like that. You know, it really is amazing. Especially for someone like me who doesn't have my own, I don't have my own experience of having been a partner and partnered someone. I mean, a little bit in Ice Capades, you know, in that one group number where we had to waltz together. <laughs> not. <laughs> so I'm always coming at it from an imagination point of view and a, and a, mm. and a visualization point of view and like shapes and or feelings but how to act I, I need them to help me bring my ideas to it's different do you know what I mean yeah I, I do know what you mean because you you choreograph for me and yeah um, <laughs> I experienced that it is it is uh yeah, Same. yeah. but it's it, it is interesting experience. <laughs> always good I love working with David um really <laughs> I mean the interesting the interesting part of that is I mean probably it, it makes more sense with more experienced skaters at a higher level but what it does do is it, it creates um, a vision of what you want and then you know the, the two skaters have to kind of work out the intricacies of how it all works yeah. so you kind of fast forward to it being your own in a sense you know do. because it came from you yeah it's you're, it's, you're it's, steering and conducting but at the same yeah. time it's and sometimes we don't know what we, like i don't know what i want i just might have um more of a an emotional impetus um and it's in sharing those feelings and those ideas that it sparks something in them and then they give you something back and you're like oh, wow i love that you know, or I like that, but can it do this, you know? So it's, it's very experimental and it's, it's exciting. It, it would be almost like choreographing a synchronized swim team. Like, you know, like it's just, it's just, it's anything you do that takes you out of what your normal experience is, is very invigorating, I find. Well, David, it's, it's been a pleasure having you on the show. You are a gift and treasure in the figure skating world um thank you and uh it was it was a pleasure working with you on battle of the blades it was so nice to be able to work that with was really fun thank in that God. capacity i couldn't have done it without you <laughs> we all have our roles we all have our roles <laughs> yeah. was, i mean it was amazing being on the outside and looking at you guys so yeah. That's creepy. You, you, <laughs> that's all. That's, but did you not? I was always peering around the. the oh, I know. I saying. know. I knew when you were there. I was like, David, hide some moves. Hide some moves. <laughs> well, I have to say, Ash, Asher, I was so, so, uh, in, like, I was so impressed with what you guys were doing every week and what Ben and Catherine did with you guys. I mean, I just kept wanting to steal all your moves. Like,. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so the grass is always greener, right? Like <laughs> <laughs> that makes me feel really good that David wants yeah, to. Yeah, you guys were amazing. Yeah, it was it was a fun experience, and I I wish it happened under more social uh, uh, 
the social circumstances than we were with the you know COVID restrictions. But um, maybe soon. next year if it happens, maybe if next we're invited back. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thanks, David, and uh, enjoy some downtime, some much-deserved downtime, if you get Thanks. much of it. But uh, not my cottage. Do you want to see? Yes. This is my view. Oh, Can you wow. see? Yeah. That's Quinty Bay. So I'm on Quinty Bay. Uh, I got a. I'm not on the water, but I like got the view, and I, it's a sunset view. So. Ooh, that sounds yeah. perfect. That sounds yeah. inspiring for creating. <laughs> yeah, I love my chipmunks and my squirrels and birds. And, yeah. That's this is where David gets his inspiration from the yes. chipmunks and the birds. He Watching animals Disney. interact with each other. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah he's a real he is a real life Disney uh, yeah. uh antagonist. I'm like uh, was that Snow White? Protagonist, sorry, not antagonist. Protagonist. Snow White with all the little you know when she's Yeah, walking yeah, yeah, exactly. Yes. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's <laughs> Getting all the avian flu, yeah. Well, uh, <laughs> when I win the lottery, I'm going to, I want to start a sanctuary farm. Like that would be oh. my fantasy because I love, love, love animals. Other than skating, it's animals for me. And I would love to do that. Well, David, it's been a blast. Thank you so much. Always a pleasure to speak with you and thanks for gracing us with your presence. Thank yeah. you so much. It's great to talk to you. Love you, David. I love you guys too.